In this video, we're going to get introduced to cameras and working with cameras and 3D. So let's get started. First thing is to look at what I have here is the composition called 3D. And on this, I have two layers. One layer is flowers, which is a text layer. And it has a, a, a fill of a light purple and then a darker purple for an outline. And we have a JPEG image, which is scaled down. But it's this picture of this beautiful flower. And so uh, let's uh, see what's going on with it. So first of all, let's take a look at if we, if we, uh, I'm going to choose fit. And if we work with the flowers, and uh, I want to maybe look at rotating it. So if I uh, look at rotation, and I, I scale here, you see, okay, so I'm rotating, and I kind of rotate basically like this, you know, wherever the access point is that's where I'm going to be rotating either clockwise or counterclockwise in this uh, 2D 2D area so uh, I'm going to reset this I just hit U twice to get all of the, the transforms I hit reset and uh, I'm going to scale this guy back down again here there we go. but I don't have the rotation is set there at zero so um, so let's look at uh, position here on the flower too so I'm hitting the P key and we have X and Y. So if we move, we move along the X here, the X axis, and here we move along the Y axis. Again, we're moving in 2D space. So in order to work with 3D, you have to change these layers. And this little guy right here, 3D layer, allows this layer to be manipulated in three dimensions. So let's activate that for both. Oh, by the way, if you don't see this, here's the toggle switches, so it should be there if you click like that. Um, so we enable 3D. Now let's revisit the flowers again. And if we look at the flowers, and let's take a look at uh, rotation first. Ah, rotation adds a whole lot more here. Actually, we've got now orientation under our rotation uh, categories. I just typed uh, R there. So let's start with the, uh, uh, this is X, Y, and Z rotation. Uh, here's X, Y, and Z rotation as well. Really the difference here is that the orientation is sort of setting it to where you want it to be for the sort of starting point and uh, it doesn't animate that well because it'll just go to the easiest way so if it rotates at almost 360 and the next one's at 2 it's just going to zip there instead of going around so you don't have as much control over it. These guys right here, the X, Y, and Z rotation, you can not only set the uh, the rotation amount here, but you can set the revolutions here. So if you want it to spin around 10 times, you can just type 10 in here. Okay, so let's look at the orientation here uh, and see what we're spinning on. This is on the x-axis. Oh, now this is different. Notice we've got this this thing up here with uh, a, a Z on the blue, and then the green is the Y, and the red is the x-axis. So the x-axis is what we're spinning on. So the x-axis is going spinning like this. It's actually spinning around. This is something different. So it's actually spinning in 3D space. See, I'm going to rotate that along that red line as if it were making a big bar across. Okay, imagine that that red's making a big, huge bar across there. Now, if I uh, rotate the y, you see now we're going up this little Y bar, which you just imagine it as an axis, as a, as a big pole now that we're pivoting on. Okay, so now it's pivoting on that. Okay, and then uh, Z is going to actually look kind of similar to the way it used to look with rotation, but it's actually going, you know, towards us and away from us. So it's the Z rotation that looks like the old rotation. So there's 3D being enabled. And uh, again, these, these X is going to basically do the same thing here. And you can animate all of this stuff right here. You could have it you know, spinning and, and uh, pivoting, all sorts of stuff like that. See how it's actually cutting through our text? It's actually a mirror image of it on the other side. OK, so I'm going to reset all this again and, and rescale our guy. So if I hit, uh, I'm going to hit U and uh, go ahead and uh, reset this and, and uh, bring our skate back down again. Okay, so there we are. Back to looking at this. Now that it's activated in 3D, that's great. We have another parameter that we can work with um, when, we, when we talk about rotation and position. Position here has added a new one. So we've got X, okay, which looks the same. 
Y, which looks the same as it does for position in, in a 2D layer. But we've got Z now, which looks almost like scale. Okay, so that's coming towards us. So that's our Z value there. All right, let's start looking at cameras now. So to add a camera, we'll go to Layer, New, Camera. And we'll start by looking at the type. So we'll look at a one-node camera. And then here's our camera one node. And uh, I'm going to use the preset of a 35 millimeter lens. The wider the lens. And then here's a telephoto lens. So we'll choose a 35. And a lot of other options we can change as we look at in further videos. But this is good just to get introduced. Uh, we'll go ahead and click OK. And if we drop down the position of our camera by hitting the letter P over here in the layers. And um, I want to take a look at this uh, Let's in more than one way. Let's actually take a look at uh, the, the options we have here for viewing cameras. So here we have one view, but we also can go all the way to four views. And that way we can actually see an active view, in, uh, a right side of the view, the front, and the top. And here even in the top you can tell that I've moved the flowers just uh, in front of it in Z space. So it's actually in front of this. So here we are. Um, let's simplify this a little bit. Change it to two views. And I've got the right view and the active view. And the right view right now has currently has the outlines for my camera enabled. So if I select this one, this view, come up to our upper right of the panel and choose uh, view options. Then over here, camera wireframe set to on. That's what's allowing us to see this. So uh, for this demonstration, I want that on so you can see where with how the camera is working. And we'll go ahead and change the Y space and see what it does. So, uh, so as it's going down over here, it's as if the camera is just moving in Y space up and down. So that's what we see in the active camera. Okay. Let's take a look at another camera. So uh, we'll add a new camera. So we'll go to Layer, New, Camera. And in this camera, we'll add a two-node camera. So we'll change the name over here to Camera 2-Node. And it'll be a 35 millimeter 2. And we'll go ahead and click OK. Now, if we bring down the position for that, so I hit position here. Now watch as I changed, change the Y. Notice that when we when we pivot up here, there's a difference in that instead of the whole thing just going up like one cone, just just going uh, directly up, this is pivoting or rotating a little bit, and it's keeping this line focused on the picture. So it's a point of interest. So the camera is moving around here, um, but it's always keeping an eye on this. Okay, so that's that's the big difference is that, that there's a point of interest. And here we can look at the options that are underneath um, underneath this. So here under transform, uh, let's, uh, drop this down so we see everything, and there's the transform. See we have a point of interest, position, orientation, X, Y, and Z, and the same uh, and some more in-depth camera options here. But comparing it to camera one, you can see that the camera one does not have a point of interest set up. And that's the big difference on, on how they work. Now, we can, uh, in addition to changing these rotations and all of this stuff here as far as the camera in space by, by moving it here, we can also use a tool. So we'll look at the camera one mode for a second and come up to this tool right here, which is called the Unified camera tool. And when you have a three button mouse then you can have access to all three of these tools right away. And you can also access these three tools just by hitting the letter C on your keyboard which will toggle you through them. So if I choose the orbit camera right here and I've got the camera uh, and I start to kind of move that around you see it's moving and looking at this picture but it's as if, see on the left side under the right view, it's as if the person's just got the camera and they're moving it around themselves, but they're not moving at all. Okay, now let's compare this same tool to uh, using a two-node camera. 
and here's that on the two node camera and you see with this one the point of interest stay there so the the person you know is almost moving around to uh, to take the shot so that's the difference that we're seeing here between these two now in the two mode two node one when I switch to my other options here when I switch to the uh, track XY camera then this looks similar to what we've seen before up and down there and then when we switch it to our track Y uh, excuse me track Z this will also just go zoom us forward and backwards pretty fast there and you can see the camera moving, zooming forward and backward or moving in, in Z space and this is essentially the same for a one node camera as well so now you can just an animate these by setting keyframes and then making changes along the way like you would any other uh, layer and um, you could also do something which would be really cool which is to switch cameras so you can have multiple cameras set up in you know, different angles and uh, you simply would just cut so sort of for example here if I've got uh, both of these eyes on we start here with the one node camera and then it just jumps to the two node camera here so go ahead and experiment with uh, cameras and have some fun, set up some keyframes. Uh, remember, uh, this can get kind of out of hand real quickly, so there's always that reset button right here. Uh, and uh, you can always blow away a camera and put a new one up and keep experimenting. So have fun.